wonder how we get stuff up by the roofs. Took a few minutes, but I got all my stuff over here to this unit we're going to be working on today. Now, for those who remember, on the first video here, part one, I came out here on an OT call, an emergency situation. They had no AC in the dining room. I got them temporarily going by putting this piece of cardboard over top of our dead condensing fan motor so I could get air flowing through the condenser. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and replace both condensing fan motors, both blades, capacitors, relays, and then we're going to sort of commission the system. I'm going to go through, check my supply, return, amp draw, uh, do the whole nine yards, make sure this thing's going to get them through summertime at the very least. So let me uh, start getting some tools out and we'll get after it. All right, guys, I'm going to remove my temporary cardboard fix and we're going to get these fan motors changed out. I'm going to take you along for the ride. It might be kind of mundane and boring, but for some of the newer guys, this might be beneficial. For the new guys out there, these outdoor fan blades, for me, I mean, they never come off. In a pinch, you can get them off if you you know, I got a file, a grinder, whatever you need, you can get them off. But what I found is the amount of time it takes to actually get one of these off, it's not even worth the $2 that the fan blade costs. So I'm gonna go down here, disconnect my little Molex plug, simple little Molex plug. I don't know if you can see that on camera here, but it's a, it's a nice, just quick disconnect plug. Now we got a half inch bolt holding our belly band in place. Another thing you can do since this fan blade is bad and it's being replaced, if you can't reach this bolt very easily, just go ahead and bend a fan blade up out of the way garbage anyway. Alright, our half inch bolt is out. And normally I have to take a wrench or something to kind of pry open this belly band because it's been stuck in place for who knows how long. band open real quick. All right, motor's in place. Get our ground wire attached. Get our bolt back on and get this motor tightened up. So our belly band is nice and tight. Real quick before I put this fan blade on, I'm just gonna label the date of install with a paint marker.
fan blade is about a half is about halfway into the hub. Myself here. It's not going to work if we don't plug it in. I'm just going to add an extra zip tie just to kind of keep the wiring supported a little closer to the Molex connector. set now let's get over to the capacitor and relays I apologize for the slightly bad camera angle I couldn't get a better angle to get you a better view because we're working in kind of tight quarters here but we'll do our best and again I do have the unit off always always make sure you have the unit off before you start reaching into these control compartments Now these relays are really, really simple to change out, especially because we're doing an exact swap. So the one I'm replacing is the exact same. We just do wire for wire. Here's our replacement guys. 24 volt ice cube relay. You can get a little bit of a better view there. See 24 volts. Nice and shiny and brand new. And what I did before I started this is I took a picture of it just in case. Uh, for example, sometimes you'll kind of get working around here and you might bump a wire. And if that wire's terminal happens to be loose, you could pull that wire right off. And then you look back and you have no idea where it came from. So always take a picture, draw a little diagram, whatever you got to do. Um, worst case scenario, if you need to, you know, you can just look back at the wiring schematic and probably figure it out assuming your wiring schematic is still legible. This last wire here needs a little bit more coercing. There we go. Now that is our K10 relay. All swapped out. Let me get her tightened down. We'll move down to our K68. All right, relay is nice and tight. Start swapping some wires. As I'm pulling these wires off, I'm just checking to make sure they're nice and tight as I push them onto the new relay. These are all pretty good. And if they're not, all you got to do is take your needle nose pliers. Tighten the ends of them down a little bit. There we go. We're replacing our capacitors with 10 microfarad capacitors. What I always do, even though they're brand new, I'll double check them. 9.6 right out of the box. 10.01 right out of the box. The second thing you always do, take a pair of insulated needle nose pliers and you wanna touch the terminals on either side of this capacitor just to short it out to bleed any sort of voltage that's inside there out. 
I mean, it's been off for quite some time, so if there was any sort of voltage inside there, it would have dissipated by now. But just to be safe, I always do it this way. Now, the technical way to do it is to take, uh, I don't remember exactly what it is, but a 2000K ohm resistor and place it across this, the terminals on the capacitor. This is kind of a, a real world sort of way of doing things, I suppose. Still safe somewhat, as long as you don't touch the capacitor. Make sure you guys don't get lazy and just ignore this, this strap that holds the capacitor in place. It's there for a reason. Put it back. Now I noticed this earlier, I don't know if we'll pick it up on camera here, but if you see right here somebody put a uh, double spade on this capacitor. Now, I don't really understand that because as you can tell this capacitor has multiple terminals so there's really no need to do that, but oh well, it is what it is. Uh, real quick, I wanted to point this out to you guys. Somebody had replaced the R22 in the system with MO99, which is fine. And they put a new dryer on here, which is all good, and a sight glass, which I don't care about, but whatever. Um, but what they didn't do is they didn't take the strap and move it over, or at least put a bigger strap around this, this dryer, which is larger than the uh, factory installed dryer. But they just left it over here. So, I mean, this thing's going to get a little bit of vibration, and eventually it's going to lead to a crack in one of these elbows, somewhere along the line that could eventually lead to a crack. So what I'm gonna do is take this strap off, see if it'll fit over here. If not, I'm gonna go get a piece of plumber strap and we'll get this dryer strapped up properly. As you can tell, we got our filter dryer properly strapped in place, nice and tight, not moving anywhere. Again, our ice cube relays are replaced, capacitors are replaced. Uh, we are ready to fire this thing up. Stand back here and give you an overview. If you notice my cardboard up there is being held down by our old condensing fan motor to kind of give me a little bit of shade. I don't normally bring one of those fold up canopies with me unless I'm doing a very, very big job and I'm going to be there for a while. Uh, but it was kind of getting warm. I had a box handy and old motor handy, so why not? All right, let's get this wrapped up. All right, guys, I just turned the unit back on. We are in stage one cooling. Stage two has not come on yet. Let's get an amp draw of our stage one compressor. 12.5, 15 is kind of our rule of thumb on this unit, 12 to 15, just to make sure yeah, this one's still off. Let's go up here to our indoor blower motor. Indoor blower motor is pulling five amps. That's good. Our brand new condensing motor pulling two amps. Our second new condensing motor is also pulling 2.1 amps. So everything looks good. We'll just wait a little while to see if our stage two kicks on. Let's go over here and make sure our condensing fan motors are spinning in the right direction just for a visual there we go they are spinning in the right direction now an old timer once told me if you walk up to a condensing unit you put your head on it and it doesn't stick to it you got airflow issues now again that's 
that's just a very very loose rule of thumb but there's a little bit of truth in it you know hats by no means are scientific tools of measurement let's see what our supply is we're picking that up on camera We're at 68 and dropping. It'll drop faster once that second stage kicks in. So let's give it a few minutes, see if stage two comes on. All right, guys. I just wanted to give a quick recap of that last call. Um, I wasn't able to film the end of that because my camera kept dying. But uh, we did get into second stage cool, my final supply temp was i believe 51 but uh, everything came out nice dining room was nice and cool all the staff were happy um best case scenario so i hope you enjoy these videos guys uh, i'm trying to keep them raw sort of real world situations i don't want to edit them too much and cut out a lot of the little things that may or may not add to the video but um hopefully you like it like and subscribe we'll see you on the next one